Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're doing okay. I'm going to read through the full article here. There's a link in the description. This is an update. I did cover this story at the time, um, which was a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, in regards to a three-month-old baby uh, boy, Brandon Cuella, being kidnapped. And um, thankfully, they've the authorities have captured, arrested the culprit uh, an illegal alien has been charged with kidnapping three month old brandon Cuella. so we're going to look through the full details there is a political aspect or a political angle in regards to this um whether or not this illegal action should have been booted out of the state of california quite some time ago uh california's acting as a sanctuary state some are arguing, well, that's got nothing to do with it. The fact she's got an illegal alien. No, you know, there's no relation there. Um, it's just merely a coincidence that an illegal alien is performing illegal activities. Merely a coincidence. That's what some people would say. Others would say, look, if you invite illegals into your illegal aliens into your state and you look after them and you give them sanctuary... You are inviting further illegal activities. You are inviting further problems. That, that's perhaps the camp that I would uh, more comfortably reside in. Uh, but regardless of that, um, thankfully, young Brandon has been returned safely. And uh, two people have been arrested in regards to his kidnapping. So we're going to look through the details. An illegal alien deported three times from the United States has been charged for her alleged involvement in kidnapping three-month-old Brandon Cuella. Hopefully my pronunciation is okay. Brandon Cuella in the sanctuary state of California. Yesenia Yesenia Ramirez, Yesenia Ramirez, a 43-year-old illegal alien from El Salvador, has been arrested and charged along with 28-year-old Jose Roman Portillo for allegedly kidnapping young Brandon Coella in broad daylight last month uh, whilst his grandmother was unloading groceries. Okay, so do you remember this story? Well, it did it, uh, I guess, a month ago, a few weeks ago. The Immigration and Customs Enforcement officials, ICE officials, confirmed that Ramirez... Yesenia Ramirez was deported in 2018. She returned twice to the United States in 2019 and was deported each time before returning again at an unknown date. I'm just going to interject at that point. What are you supposed to do? You know, if you're the authorities, what are you supposed to do? I mean, these people just, they get deported and they turn back around and they're back over the border what are you supposed to do i suppose i suppose this is a crazy thought i suppose you could build a wall maybe i mean that's not going to solve the problem a hundred percent although in those towns those areas where the, the wall has been completed uh, i believe it has shown an incredibly high uh, drop in illegal immigration i believe i'm not an expert i've not looked into this subject for quite a while but i believe like you're looking at you know a 90 percent 95 percent reduction of illegal immigration uh in regards to crossing the border in those areas in which the uh wall uh trump's wall was completed i think i'm right in saying that if i'm not i'm not and i don't want to get too political because i don't want you to unsub just because you feel that you disagree with what you feel my political viewpoints are that would be a real shame. Hopefully you don't. But, I mean, I guess if you do, you do. In 2019, after having been convicted of illegal re-entry, uh, this illegal alien, Yesenia Ramirez, spent just 10 days in jail. ICE agents have asked the Santa Clara County Jail to turn Yesenia Ramirez over to their custody if she is released at any time. But California's expansive sanctuary state policy protects criminal illegal aliens from arrest and deportation i mean look i'm just gonna let flat out lay my political views on the line by the way i don't live in america by the way i never will but that is just 
utter insanity. I'm just looking at this one sentence here, and of course it's not the full situation. It's a reductionist uh, viewpoint that we're looking at here. But if this is in any way true and accurate, then that is absolute insanity. California's sanctuary state policy protects criminal illegal aliens from arrest and deportation. I believe that is the case, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's absolute fucking craziness. One of the reasons why America is, has fallen to bits, has past tense, not in the process of falling to bits, present tense, no, past tense, has fallen to bits. Yesenia Ramirez's attorney said that the suspect's illegal alien status has no nexus to and no bearing on her guilt or innocence. Fuck you, man. Look, I mean, if they come to America as an illegal alien, how are they going to derive an income? You know, if we presume that they don't have tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars in the bank to support themselves, let's, if we presume that they're not wealthy business or property owners you know if they're like you and me and they live check to check as it were how are they going to make money if they're illegal they're not going to be able to get an illegal job are they they would have to work illegally and maybe sure maybe they can do some they can work illegally in a can I say a non-criminal way? Like, I mean, if you... I mean, I can't really say that, but you know what I mean. Like, if they were to do landscaping, there's no victim there, per se, other than the uh, US citizen landscapers who were denied the opportunity because uh, the illegals are able to not pay tax and with that charge a lesser amount and be more competitive within the market. But anyway, you know... If they don't do work as a landscaper or a cleaner or something like along those lines, then they're going to turn to criminal activity, aren't they? Such as kidnapping. So, lawyer who's gone to law school for four years and you've studied for the bar, you're a dumbass compared to me who knows nothing about the law, but you're a dumbass. I'm able to see that there is a bearing between the suspect's illegal alien status and their illegal activity. I can see that. You can't, thereby, ergo, you're a dumbass. Late last month in San Jose, California, police alleged that uh, this illegal alien, Yesenia Ramirez, and the other scumbag, let's not forget him, Jose Roman Patillo, conspired to kidnap Brandon Coelho, the three-month-old, whilst his grandmother watched him. The kidnapping came, uh, police allege, after Ramirez befriended the grandmother at church and instantly became obsessed with the newborn. Surveillance footage purports to show Portillo kidnapping Coella in broad daylight. So we can watch that. Let's have a look at this. This is one of the two scumbags taking young Brandon away. Broad daylight. Broad daylight. It's craziness. I mean, but what are neighbours supposed to do, you know? A neighbour's supposed to go up to someone that they've never seen before and say, hey there, is that your baby? You know? Criminals have got so many advantages at play, but thankfully, maybe technology is going to be... Uh, diminishing some of uh, criminals advantages because we have these ring doorbells doorbell cams and look at the quality of that doorbell cam it's it's very good sure you can't make out the face but you can certainly you'd still be able to identify him based on his physical build you know if you had a uh, a lineup if, if, he, if he was to be captured it, you know there'd, there'd be a way to prove his dimensions, that kind of thing. Anyway, Brandon Coella was reported missing and found safe about 20 hours later. The newborn had been taken to a church that is linked to the homicide of a three-year-old toddler. So I'm going to throw in there, without too much knowledge, that you have to question that church. Is that church acting as a criminal sanctuary? Um, and in so being, being involved in all kinds of heinous 
criminal acts, including kidnapping. I hope that's something that's investigated. These two scumbags, Ramirez and Portillo, have been charged with kidnapping, conspiracy to commit kidnapping, child abduction and home invasion. So let's hope that they get sentenced and get jailed for a lengthy period of time. Again, I don't know what the answer is. I mean, do you jail them in America at the the cost of the to the taxpayers? Are the other countries, El Salvador, are they happy with that, with their citizens being jailed in another country? I don't know. I really don't know how that works. It's a fucking mess, if you ask me. And um, I don't know what the solution is entirely, but the wall seems to be like a fucking good start to me, in my mind. You know, finish the wall. Don't know why you didn't. Oh, yeah, that's right, because Biden got in. Um a wall seems to be a pretty good starting point, sure. there's It's not going to be 100% effective, but it's going to go a long way. And certainly, what isn't the solution, I would say, from my political point of view, as a non-US citizen, is uh, having sanctuary states. To me, that is just fucking lunacy. Absolute lunacy. And another potential aspect, which is lunacy, is whether or not churches have chosen... To take it upon themselves to act as sanctuaries to these criminals. I mean that needs to be absolutely stamped out if that is indeed the case. But in any case I've gone through all of the article there. It is uh, an update to a previous topic that we've covered. The kidnapping of Brandon Coella. He was taken whilst his grandmother was unstacking the groceries. Unloading the groceries. Uh, by this stupid scumbag here who basically defrauded the grandmother pretended that she was a, a nice person and was there to assist to help she'd fallen in love with the toddler uh, but no it was all a plan to kidnap complete coincidence that the kidnapper was an illegal alien